This video is going to be a look into the different mixer head designs you can get on paint mixer attachments and which one I think is best for pottery. I started this a while ago and I thought the answer would be fairly straightforward, but actually the topic is more complicated than I thought and probably is a less of a clear cut answer than I was initially hoping for. Hopefully this is going to be interesting. I've learned a lot through the process and I will attempt to share that with you today. Not only am I going to talk to you about the different mixer heads, Treats sent me a box of international snacks. Those of you who get contacted by companies looking for brand deals will probably have seen similar. It's quite common for companies that reach out to you to put, I watched your latest video and they copy and paste the full title in. Treats happened to get in touch with me and tell me that they thought that my video on how to avoid air bubbles when extruding clay using a handheld extruder to make handles was absolutely fascinating. And they thought that we would work well together. So I'm going to consume some of these treats while doing a very long video about mixer designs. And hopefully they feel that works equally well. They have sent me a handful of snacks from Taiwan. So you get a little fact card about Taiwan. And then I've got a variety of things to try. And I believe one of them tells me what they are. Yeah, so let's start with a Shelly Senbei, which is a round cracker with a crispy crunch and savory flavor. And they are baked, not fried. I'm hungry, which is why I'm starting with these. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, quite sweet on the outside, very crunchy, rice crackery. I like them. Okay, we're off to a good start. If you've ever bought um, a paint mixer, it probably looks something like, actually probably the most common one I would say, is something like that. And it's got a screw thread on it, essentially, um, and a ring at the bottom, and often made of metal. You can get plastic versions of them. My go-to is this plastic one, which has got um, six blades with a slight angle, and they're quite steeply angled blades, and then the outer ring means it doesn't kind of rattle when it hits on the outer wall of a glaze pot. But you can get some more unusual ones. Um, I found a very flat propeller one and a very steep bladed one. So this has barely any angle. A sawtooth, uh, it's supposed to come with a hexagonal rod, but it kept getting lost in transit. So I made my own out of a uh, threaded rod. And a perfectly flat paddle. Now each of these has their own advantage and disadvantage, which I was intending to try and demonstrate, but it's actually quite hard to demonstrate with water because water is too fluid, where glaze mix will be a bit thicker. Um, you don't actually get to see the different ways that these will mix with just water. So what I've got is a pot of water to which I'm gonna add some seeds, chia, hemp, and um, flax seeds. Now anyone who's done any vegan cooking will be familiar with chia or flaxseed egg. What happens is that the seeds gel up when they're added to water and it behaves a bit like egg white. So I'm hoping this will thicken the water and give you something to see the mixing process. So I'm going to add some. Should I just add all of them? I'm going to add all of them. We've got something in there that will hopefully in a couple of minutes have thickened up and I can demonstrate the different ways the mixers work. I've really enjoyed that cracker. I think it's a sweetness. Sweet and salty and crunchy. You can't go too far wrong with that. Right. There are actually three movements that a mixer blade will impart onto the fluid that it's put in. And they behave quite differently. In a quite fluid liquid, they'll tend to do all three. It's only, it only really matters when it's a viscous liquid and it doesn't want to move. Obviously, when you get a propeller blade, 
what that does is as it turns, it either pushes the fluid up or down, depending on the direction of rotation, which I think the, the term used in the research that I looked at is longitudinal. So you're talking about going straight up and down, where if you put that in a container of fluid, it'll push up, circulate round, come back. So you get a circular motion. Um, something like this paddle will largely do radial force. So it forces the liquid outwards. So a bit like a centrifuge or um, you get centrifugal pumps work like this. It basically, as it spins, it just pushes the liquid straight out. In a fluid liquid, that will cause turbulence. The whole thing will mix in a viscous liquid that will actually just sort of mix on one plane and won't actually disturb uh, the different layers. So this doesn't get much mixing throughout. So not really ideal for what we want. A huge advantage to this particular flat paddle though is that it's really easy to clean, which is why I, I love this one for mixing up clay. Afterwards, you just wipe it clean. When you get something like this one, there's all the kind of nooks and crannies that get filled with thick clay slip. And then the last type of mixing, the sawtooth mixer will do a lot of is it tangential. I'm going to say it's tangential. I think it's tangential. And that's the where the mix, the fluid moves round. So you've got circulating vertically, uh, circulating by going straight outwards and back in. So either it's forced up, it's forced out, or it's drawn round. And so this will make a vortex. So then the question is, which one do we want? And what do we want to get out of our mixing? Well, I would say that what we want from our mixing is the quickest, most efficient mixing with the least amount of air added. There are reasons that you wouldn't want to add air to a glaze or a clay, particularly casting slip. With a glaze, if there's air bubbles trapped in it, before you dip a piece, those air bubbles can get transferred onto the, the application and get trapped. You can get pinholes if you trap an air bubble under the glaze and then it sort of bursts in the firing. So depending on the surface tension, the viscosity of your liquid and how much air you get trapped in it, you can get a much worse glaze application if you're adding air. And then same with casting slip, if it's full of bubbles, the bubbles will appear on the inside surface. The outer wall tends to cast quite well, but the inner wall, once you empty the slip back out, that's where the bubbles will be seen. So if you want a smooth surface on the inside, you don't want any slip in it, Mix in plaster, same sort of deal. You want to avoid trapping air. Biggest thing you want to avoid to cause that um, is you don't want the vortex that sucks air down and forces it outwards. So we want a mixing type that causes the most mixing within the, the glaze or the, the slip without causing a vortex. And it's not as simple as just one design is better than all the others for that because there are various other things that you can do to make it better or worse. I'm gonna have another snack. Next, surimi bean, which is a spicy dried bean curd snack. I don't know what the normal shelf life on something like this would be, but I've noticed that the things that have expiry dates, they're all quite close. So I wonder if um, the way this, I think is a monthly box, they're relying on you eating it quickly and they can send out things that are nearly at their expiration date. Maybe get them cheaper. I don't know. Um, I need some scissors. This feels very squidgy. Mmm. Smells very savoury. So it's a squidgy, savoury. with a sort of seafoody sauce. Not so sure about that one. Also not, for, not at all spicy. Anyway, so I'm recording this before I finish writing the blog post and part of it is because I think it will be easier to demonstrate this than it is to type out an explanation. And I'm still kind of <clears throat> trying to figure out some of the details of what works best, what doesn't. Let's give this a go, see if the water has thickened up at all. So hopefully we'll be able to see there's a you can see it's 
causing a cyclone, which we don't want. There's a, a, all three types of mixing where it's um, drawing, making the, the seeds circulate vertically. It's also pushing them outwards with a lot of the cyclone type mixing. And one thing I'm going to try and demonstrate is the extent to which it matters where you put it. So if you put straight down the middle, you're going to get more of a cyclone just because it's rotating. So whatever shape head you have, it's going to want to rotate around that axis. Whereas if you move it off to the side, you can see far more of the vertical component in the mixing. And you can also angle it and put it off to the side. So we'll compare that to the paddle type mixer. which is just mostly a cyclone. But I got a good video when I was mixing up some thick clay that demonstrated the extent to which it doesn't circulate vertically. It mixes just on one plane, does a great job of it, but you have to move it up and down to mix all the different heights because it will just spin within a band of the clay. And then this one is more into or less entirely tangential, so it just makes the whole thing spin round. But you can see how this would be quite effective at mixing. And as long as you don't go too fast, it never forms a full depth vortex. Now, if I speed it up, we will see it draw air down. The vortex will get deeper. Actually, this one, in this bucket, I'd just make it overflow if I got it to draw air down. So maybe I'll switch back to one of the others. Let's go with the Jiffy. This is a very popular mixer design, Jiffy mixer. So this has got little um, angled blades as well as blades on the side. As you can see, it's added a bunch of air to it, but at a slower speed, you get a very turbulent mix. And if you put it off center, you can get quite a lot of mixing. So the positioning really does matter, positioning and angle. Um, another one to try, the very screw thread type design. sure the water is getting thick enough for this demonstration to really work. All right, I've cut a top, what do you call it? Not quite a lid, but like something that's able to sit on the top of the surface because there are a couple of ways that you can prevent a vortex. One, you so you can add baffles down the side that stop the fluid from able, being able to spin so much. So kind of add little sticky out bits. And as the water goes around, it gets kicked back in so it creates turbulence rather than being able to spin in a vortex. Another one is putting a, a lid on top. I've not tried this, but um, 
So that just floats on top and it should. Yeah, I think it might have to be fixed. What if I hold it still? Yeah, it gets drawn down. Okay, so I think that would only work if it was part of the structure and could not be pulled down into it. Fair enough. I, what I would like to try, well, I don't actually need to try it because I've seen other people use them. Florian has um, a type of mixer that brings its own flat plate above the mixing blade. So you plunge this thing down with three legs and a central mixing column and the whole thing sits at the bottom and mixes but it can't create a vortex because there's the plate that stops all the fluid from spinning another one you can get well, it probably it wouldn't help with the vortex but you can get blades where there are multiple blades that point in different directions so you'll get vertical circulation in one direction from one set of blades and it'll push up and down from two different space sets of blades in my testing, I would say the design doesn't matter. It's a combination of the design and the speed that you run it at, and more importantly, how you position the mixer head. So as I said, you can go off center, which allows a decent amount of mixing without forming a vortex. You can angle, and that might create a vortex it depends what kind of how flat you can get because in each case the direction that it wants to force it radially um longitudinally or the tangential rotation is all relative to the mixer so depending on where you put it the fluid wants to move around the mixer if it's in the middle that makes it very easy for it all to spin but if it's off to the side at an angle it makes it much harder for it to form a consistent vortex if nothing else what i would say is use whatever mixer you like but work on where you position the mixer relative to the fluid having a deeper and narrower bucket makes a big difference as well what you don't want is a small amount in the bottom of a wide one now i can demonstrate that So that was about four liters in a five liter tub. And this is now four liters in a 10 liter tub. So it's a bit wider and it will form a vortex far more easily. And if you had something about half the height of that, you'd have no chance of mixing it without adding any air. Where when it's deeper, and narrower it just does it, there's less chance of a vortex forming it's got to form over a greater height before it starts collapsing in on itself so use the right size and shape tub for the amount of fluid that you have in there if you're mixing a small amount of glaze or a small amount of slip go for a smaller tub so you can fill more depth don't put it so it's quite shallow at the bottom of a, a wider one all right i'm going to try furikaka which is a unique and savory twist on traditional popcorn. Coated with seaweed, sesame seeds, and other flavorful ingredients. Yep, yeah, popcorn with seaweed on. Nice, very seaweedy. Very popcorn-y, ooh. No, <laughs> I thought it might be like salt and shake. It's very much a do not eat silica gel. I like them. So which mixer design is best? I don't think it matters a huge amount. Now I would say, I think what you're really looking for is something that's the right scale for the container you've got. In fact, let's do a demonstration of something like this tiny one would be great for a smaller glaze pot, but on something like this, if this was a thick, glazed liquid it would really struggle just because it, it can't move that much if if the liquid's not flowing around so it's quite viscous a tiny mixer head just isn't moving the right kind of volume for it to work and similarly the sawtooth one is so big that in these size pots it just gets the whole thing spinning 
be interesting to try it in a much bigger mix to see. I think this is probably oversized, but I couldn't find many good sawtooth ones. I do like them as a design. In a way, the fact that it's so big means it doesn't have to spin so fast and it never makes, well, as I kind of demonstrated, the vortex, it gets quite a smooth curve and doesn't get a collapsing vortex. But I think the, the size is important to so pick the right size one for the application. Most of the ones you'll find will be in this sort of size range, which I think is you know sensible. This is my favorite. I do like the Jiffy. It's quite gentle, so it tends not to mix air in. So I like to use it for plaster, which is quite thick. This can be more forgiving than some of the others. But again, the best thing to do is find the right size container so that's not so much of a problem. Another consideration is how difficult they are to clean. This one is about as easy to clean as it could be. I mean, you could get one that was just literally a flat bar on the end of a, uh, a stick, and that would be really easy to clean. Ones like this, where they're all plastic, they're a bit weaker, but they are easy to clean because there are no nooks and crannies on them. Once you start adding a thin strap of metal connecting to a, a bit of metal on another plane there are so many bits that it's almost impossible to get into these are a real pain to get clay out of not so bad for glaze you can generally just stick it in a bucket of water which i would recommend doing keep a bucket of water when you're glazing just as soon as you're done with your mixer clean it off in the water the glaze will settle to the bottom and you can keep it you can just discard the water once it's settled out but overall i don't think the mixer matters that much is my conclusion having tested a bunch of different mixers at different sizes I'm, obviously i'm trying to demonstrate them here in a way that makes sense but i've been testing them in my slips and in my glazes i don't think <clears throat> it makes a huge difference the biggest factor i've noticed is the scale of it where a big mixer will because the drill is capable of making them spin at roughly the same speed will obviously do a lot more of everything and you tend to get a vortex when you've got a big mixer spinning fast. The little mixers can't do that, but they don't do as much mixing. I think the main thing that makes a difference is the technique. So if you are struggling with your current mixer incorporating air, try angling it at a different angle. So set, offset it, angle it, change the speed, so we change the container for a deeper, narrower one. And if none of that's working, maybe look at a different mixer type. This one is called a Cyclone. I got it from Amazon. I would recommend giving one of those a go if you want something that's really easy to clean and will do different type of mixing. As I say, this one does mostly radial, so it forces the clay outwards. It actually does behave quite differently to some of the others when in a viscous liquid, but in a, a fairly runny glaze, they're all pretty similar, and it's the technique that makes the big difference in my opinion. It's a more complicated topic than I was expecting. All of these have very specific uses and if you were in an industry where you had a very specific use case, you could have a mixer that was perfectly um, right for that use case. For us, go for something that's easy to clean, cheap, um, and that works for you, and that's about as good as you're gonna get. There's another type of mixer I haven't touched on here called shear mixing, um, dedicated shear mixers where the fast moving blade passes, there's two parts, a, a static part and a rotating part, sometimes with multiple layers of the two, and they move around inside each other and the fluid has to accelerate up to the rotating speed and then slow down to pass through the static one. And what that does is it creates a lot of shear force where one part's moving very slowly and one part's moving very quickly and they're very close together. And that's how they, in industry, will make things like, it kind of homogenizes things so they can make mayonnaises and sauces and whatever. It's a specific type of force. I don't think it matters for glazes. I'm, if I found a cheap one of the mixers that looked like it was any good, I was tempted to buy one, but they tend to be a few hundred pounds and they're not gonna mix up a glaze tub in the same way these are, what they will do instead is a smaller amount of liquid. They will mix it in a far more aggressive way and really kind of 
homogenize and break up everything. So it could be interesting. I haven't tested it, so I don't really have any thoughts on that. Second to last thing is a cheese rice cracker. Sounds interesting. Oh, it smell like, it's got a very fake cheese smell. It's a bit different. It's not that kind of, I think, is it what's it? That are cheesy? It's a bit different, but kind of similar to that. And then again, rice cracker. Got a nice crunch. I'm not too sure about the flavour. Quite synthetic y, as you'd expect. Meh. Wouldn't rush back for those. Really enjoyed the popcorn and the. the crackers I had at the start. And then my final thought, I just want to re-emphasize these beauties. This comes by a few different names, but it's a plaster mixer or a power mixer or a paddle mixer or a concrete mixer, depending on who you ask, but they are incredibly powerful. There's not much finesse to them, but obviously like, compare the scale of the two mixer heads. I think this thing cost me 60 pounds, something like that. This, this alone would be a quarter of the price of this whole thing, which comes with its big mixer. If you're mixing up clay or slip and you're using a little cordless, even if it's a good cordless, and this one's okay, it's Makita, it's an old one, but you know, it's powerful enough, it does its job. There is no comparison between that and this, this just obliterates everything you throw at it. So I use it on big slip drums with thick slip and it just, it smashes the slip into a smooth, like you get lumpy clay, this will just break it down. Obviously, going back to what I was saying about nooks and crannies and these being awkward to clean, this is full of nooks and crannies and it's awkward to clean, but it does such a good job of mixing slip. So you can do a massive amount to it once and you get perfectly smooth slip that will just pass through a sieve without much fight. That might burn out the motor of a cordless. This thing's designed for it. They say there's not much finesse to them. This one does have variable speed control, but it's, you know, there's not much finesse, but you just shove it in a big thing of slip and set it to work. And it's capable of mixing it up really well. So if you're looking for the best mixer attachment to mix up big buckets of slip, don't worry about getting a mixer attachment for a drill. Just get uh, a plaster slash power slash paddle slash concrete mixer and it will do all, the whole thing for you. And they're not that much more than just buying a mixer attachment for a drill and saves you burning out your drill. So final recommendation is get one of these instead. Use your cordless for mixing up glaze, but for slip, especially big amounts of slip, get one of these. And I will end my final thing, which is a volcano popping candy, lychee artificially flavoured. There's a series of words that um, may or may not appeal to you. So we've got popping candy dust. Yep, it's lychee flavoured. It pops. I haven't had popping candy in ages. Really funny stuff. So, yeah, that was um, the treats at Try Treats Taiwan box. Five different things. And I would say... My favourite were probably the crackers that I had at the start. The popcorn was quite nice. The rest of them, not so bothered. Interesting to try. Hopefully this video aligns with the treats brand as well as my Avoiding Air Bubbles one did. I'll put a link to them in the description. They've given me a discount referral code. By, well, I say discount. It's a referral code. I'm not sure if it gives you a discount or not. If it does, I'll give you the referral code. If not, I won't bother. The, the referral code only pays out in $100 increments. So I have to get $100 worth of referrals before I get paid anything, which, I mean, it's possible they're, they're right and this really closely aligns with my brand, but I don't suspect I'm going to get $100 of referrals for this. So I'll just give you the, the straightforward link. If you want to try them, I don't know how often they change country, but... It's been interesting trying the ones from Taiwan and by that I would happily eat a similar selection of things from a different country. Maybe one day I will. So thank you for sending that over treats. If you have 
any thoughts on mix aheads that I didn't get to, which I mean, there's a lot to say, and I don't think I said very much of it, please leave them in the comments. I will add a link to the blog post as and when I finish it. I think that might be more informative with the diagrams than this is going to be with the demonstration. So maybe I'll finish the diagrams and put them in here first, because I was hoping the video would show how it worked. And I don't think it did. I'm going to have to watch that back and see how well demonstrated it is. But the core concepts are there. Three types of mixing. We want something that's capable of mixing without adding air. And I think that's more down to picking the correct size, container, mixer, and then using the right technique. And I hope that something in here was either interesting or helpful. But uh, yeah, see you in the next video.